Is America still the greatest country on earth? Is it even something to be proud of anymore? Let's figure it out. So to set this up, this video has gone viral. Millions and millions of plays. It's a rant from Jeff Daniels' character, Will McAvoy, in the newsroom on why America is no longer the greatest country in the world. Every leftist and their dog has likely sent it to you. It's pretty entertaining. It's worth a watch. But is it? True, is any of it true? Let's watch. Are you willing to say here tonight whether you lean right or left? I voted for candidates run by both major parties. Okay, before we get into anything else, that's a red flag right there. This is the kind of nonpartisan journalism that only occurs in Hollywood. It's a sleight of hand trick meant to set him up as objective in order to pave the way for what becomes a leftist, anti-American, politically agenda-driven diatribe. What makes America the greatest country in the world? Well, Lewis and Sharon said it, diversity and opportunity and freedom and freedom. I'm not letting you go back to the airport without answering the question. Well, our Constitution is a masterpiece. James Madison was a genius. The Declaration of Independence is, for me, the single greatest piece of American writing. Yet later on in the interview, he's going to allude to his support of the consistent progressive abuse of the Constitution because, you know, He's objective. You know why people don't like liberals? Because they lose. If liberals are so fucking smart, how come they lose so damn always? Hey. And with a straight face. Okay, we're going to get into substance really quickly, but again, this is a trick in an attempt to feign even handedness. See, his one criticism of the liberal is that of strategy, not principle. Contrast this with what comes next. Hey. And with a straight face, you're going to tell students that America is so star spangled awesome that we're the only ones in the world who have freedom? Canada has freedom. There it is, the key, the equivalency between the United States and the freedom of all other countries. They say that they're free, so it must be so. But is that freedom the same? Is it even close? Well, let's take Canada for starters. He mentions Canada. That's a place where I was raised, a place where pastors have been banned from, not even for, practicing free speech from the pulpit, a place where the right to spontaneously protest and peaceably assemble has actually been banned by the province of Quebec. A place where there's a gun registry because you're not even allowed to own a handgun unless you prove to the government your right to self-preservation and they'll likely turn you down anyway. A place where freedom of the press is virtually non-existent because there's a monopoly on TV news from government-funded media. A place where freedom of speech really isn't a right at all. Canada has freedom. Japan has freedom. The UK, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Australia, Belgium has freedom. So 207 sovereign states in the world, like 180 of them have freedom. All right. And yet you. Obviously, I can't go through all of these countries. I'd encourage you to do your own research. What I can tell you beyond any shadow of a doubt is that not only are none of these countries anywhere near as free as the United States, but from the ground up, none of them were even intended to be. Places like the UK, with some of the highest taxes in the world actually, surpassed only by the other nations that Daniel so praises in France, Netherlands, Italy, Ireland, and Spain. The UK, where businesses can be sued out of existence and shut down simply for holding unpopular religious beliefs. And of course, access to firearms for the purpose of self-defense is all but non-existent because, well, England saw how that one ended up, regulated militia and all. How about places he's mentioned like Belgium and France, where the UN has even reported violations of religious freedom, of course, with the exception of radical Islam, which is growing so strongly in these parts of the world that they've managed to establish their own anti-freedom communities, courts, and even laws. Women's rights, civil rights, human rights, all of which are grossly and consistently violated in the name of Islam, to which these bastions of freedom so incessantly cave, and to which they will ultimately be overrun. Japan? A place founded on the idea of societal structures that were predetermined and that you were either born into nobility or a peasant. A place that sought to spread tyranny across the globe several times over. A place that has made personal firearms for defense all but illegal and religious freedoms all but non-existent. Yeah, I think we're a little more free than Japan. Yeah, you, uh, sorority girl. Just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is, 
There is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. Firstly, the high infant mortality rate in the United States is a debunked myth, and the fact that McAvoy, the character here, uses it shows us again that unbiased sleight of hand at play. The U.S. ranks relatively high on the infant mortality rate, largely because it's a country that numbers those neonatal deaths, notably in premature infant fatalities. Unlike the other countries that he so glorifies who basically leave preemies to die and never count it as a life. You'd think a nonpartisan journalist here portrayed as Will McAvoy would be able to do a modicum of research if he wanted the truth. Well, they get a few things right, it's true, we don't have the best life expectancy, and that's a consequence of personal freedoms. Nobody will argue that personal responsibility and free choice comes without the negative ramifications of people who seek to abuse it. Unlike so many other countries with low expectancy rates that come from famine and from lack, the problem the United States faces is that of such overabundance and such freedom of choice that you can overindulge yourself into an early death. In a free country, you're free to do so. It's also why the United States dominates in nearly all physical endeavors in the record books because that same freedom of choice that allows you to become a gluttonous pig also gives you the ability to choose the healthiest, most optimal lifestyle humanly possible. It's why people representing other nations in the Olympics often come to train here. Whether it's food, technology, or cutting edge training protocols, that same freedom that allows mediocrity also fosters an environment for the best of the best Ever. Sure, we may not be the number one country in the world when it comes to math and sciences, as it is hard to compete with places like China where your life path is determined at a young age by the government based on your genetics and your personal proclivities. Again, with freedom comes a greater variance than in non-free societies, but even there, his numbers are misleading. The United States has historically and continues to lead the world in both manufacturing and innovation. Now, before you get your hate comments ready, okay, it's true that on the Global Technology Index, the United States ranks third here behind Finland and Japan, Overall, where a more significant portion of innovation may come from the government or government contracts. But the United States still leads by a significant margin on individual patents per capita because despite the behemoths that we all know about in Microsoft, Apple, and Facebook, it is still the one enclave for the small business owner, entrepreneur, and innovator. If you want to innovate, if you want to try your hand at success, you come to America. Still, today, our continued innovation in the scientific, technical, technological and medical fields, yeah, it's a huge reason as to why the United States is arguably still the biggest factor in determining global economic impact today, but it's not our biggest reason. That would be that of our most influential export, that of culture. Film, stories, TV, music, art, there's never been a culture quite like America's that has saturated the world so effectively. And even if you personally don't like American culture, one needs only to look at the top grossing films, albums, and artists of all time to see the impact it's had. America dominates the list. And even with the exceptions from Canada or the UK, in order to find massive success, they first had to move to and make it in the United States. That's why all of these other countries that McAvoy so fervently praises in his monologue find their top charts dominated by American artists, yet we don't find ours filled to the brim with theirs. See whether you, McAvoy, or the self-loathing Americans in the YouTube comments section here don't want to accept that the world has already spoken on culture with their dollar. And it's one of the greatest ironies that the United States, who is so often accused of having no culture by leftist multiculturalism proponents like McAvoy, is only able to make it our greatest export because the rest of the world so desperately wants to find themselves included in it. Anyway, I wanted to brag on my country for a little bit, but even with that information, none of those things have anything to do with the original point in freedom. Sure, freedom has ultimately produced unbelievable results in the United States, but even if it didn't, that doesn't change the inherent moral superiority of the concept of freedom given to a citizenry over that of tyranny. A toothless redneck in a trailer park managing a 7-Eleven drinking bottom shelf beer who goes off to fire rounds in the woods on Saturday is still more free than an Olympic medalist in gymnastics from China who was told that she was going to be an Olympic gymnast at six because she had the right genetics and that her career was going to be done by 12. Freedom isn't afforded to a citizenry inherently because it produces better results. It's afforded to them 
because it's right. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, they can find some common ground here. The United States is not the best at everything. I'm certainly not here to argue that. Our prison system is flawed. It could use some improvement. I do find it funny that he ultimately throws away people who believe in angels as silly because it completely undermines his final point, which I'll address in closing. But his mocking of America's defense spending is iconic of one of the greatest ironies lost on leftists, in that these other countries who enjoy these selective paltry freedoms afforded to them by their governments are still only able to do so because it's an opportunity afforded to them by the United States of America. That's right, I'm saying it. Belgium, France, Germany, the UK, Canada can all enjoy their kind of freedom because of the greatest peacekeeping organization the world has ever known, the United States military. Hey, UK, you wanna continue to enjoy your freedom of censoring social media and the press? That's great. You now have to defend the free world. Go. Canada enjoys their freedom to censor public speech. That's fantastic. Let's change one little variable here, Canada. You now have to defend your borders, your vast underpopulated land, rich in natural resources that everybody else would want to conquer, and the United States is no longer your big brother. Have at it. France wants to continue enjoying a socialist 75% tax rate? Go nuts! Now try keeping your country's economy afloat while thwarting terror cells all across the world while providing more foreign aid to third world countries in the history of ever go. A huge irony is that many of these countries that Jeff Daniels so openly praises actually found themselves on the wrong side of freedom, actively fighting to end it, only to be thwarted by ignorant patriotic Americans who ensured that it would live on for generations to come. England, France, Germany, Japan, they're going to be the ones to educate us on freedom? Really? We stood up for what was right. We fought for moral reasons. We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We Here's where he gets emotionally disingenuous, that we once wrote laws for moral reasons. Well, there's a shred of truth to that. Why do you think that is? We're able to be all these things and do all these things because we were informed by great men, men who were revered. Yeah, the Founding Fathers were intelligent, but they weren't revered for being informed. They were revered for their bravery, for their principles, for their unwavering, whether you like it or not, deeply held respect for a faith that they saw as necessary for a government to create a truly free people. He's right. We did stand up for what was right. See, for the first time from the ground up, a government was designed to give its citizens true freedom not afforded to them by these men but by a creator on which no man would be allowed to infringe the concept of inalienable God-given rights. That's what's singularly unique about America and its founders who were silly enough to believe in angels. If you like this video, subscribe by clicking my face or watch one of these other videos next to me. It's free and maybe you'll enjoy them. If you don't, it's still free.